this these plumes of hot gas coming out of the top and the bottom of the galaxy. Yeah. Interesting. That, I mean, I'm 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 a picturing like you know like a like a geyser of incredibly hot gas. I'm imagining it's probably some diffuse thing just slowly. Walking. Well, it's very diffuse. I mean, it's moving out at a fair rate of knots. I mean, the the, the, the stuff which is emitted from a single supernova is is flung out initially at uh, tens of thousands of kilometers a second. That's going at some fair rate. And the gas that is produced in this supernova um, explosion is, is crazily hot, you know, 10 million, 100 million degrees. So it's really hot gas. And really hot gas is slow to cool. So the reason that when we look in the Milky Way, for example, at the uh, out of our galactic plane at this hot gas, the reason it's still there is it just takes a really long time to cool down when it, when it gets heated to such high temperatures. And what's the fate of this gas? Well, that, one expects probably that the gas will cool down and it will kind of rain back down on the disk in due course because, of course, it's being gravitationally attracted back down to the center of mass of the object, which is in the center, of the, which is a, this back, back down to the disk of the galaxy. So it, it goes up there, it will come back down again. It's unlikely it will, it will have such a velocity, it's going to be kick, that it will escape. So most likely it will rain back down again once it cools down, back down to the disk. M82 is a bit different from a big galaxy like the Milky Way because it's quite a small galaxy undergoing a very intense burst of star formation, which means all that hot gas goes up to very high distances. It's, it's almost, the gas, if you take a look at a picture, is almost as far away from the galaxy as the whole size of the galaxy. But it's going to fall back down. But it's basically, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be attracted back down because the gravitational pull of the galaxy is so large. If a supernova doesn't get you out of a galaxy, then I take it there's just no escape from a galaxy? Well, there are things, there are stars which are called hypervelocity stars, which somehow have maybe interacted with something very massive, it might be a black hole, maybe even our, our galactic centre's supermassive black hole, where they've got, they've got a velocity which is comparable to the escape velocity of the galaxy. So there are potentially stars which, if they live long enough, would actually then meander through intergalactic space. But you've never found one of them? Well, there have been hypervelocity stars found. They're hard to see, hard to spot, because not, you can't just look, take a look at a picture. You have to get information on the velocity of the star, not just even the velocity that we can detect on a longer line of sight, but it's true velocity. And so we, there are objects which we think will escape our Milky Way. And but there's never been one spotted drifting out there. Well, you, it's, it's so hard to find, because an at, at individual star at large distances, the, the only ones you would see would be the, the most massive ones, and those ones don't live long enough to really get very far before they die. What a fine that would be, though. I love the idea of some lone wolf just drifting between galaxies. Yeah, well, so I think there will be such stars out there, just it's really tough going, looking for them, finding them.